last week I sent you an email or you should have received an email from me that had a link for art supplies before the class began. I wanted to give you a direct link for shopping through the art supply company that we use, which is Dick Blick. And I wanted to give you a chance to organize your art supplies at home and compile the list of supplies that you might have on hand. I thought it might be helpful for you if we actually visually walk through the art supplies that we're using for this class. And let me just talk to you about the purchase of these supplies for a, an elementary school classroom and how versatile they can be in a variety of areas, not just the projects that we're making for this course. So I'm gonna talk about each supply, both the purchased supplies that were included in the link, as well as the supplies that um, we're asking you to, to find around your house that you probably have at home. The only supply that I don't have on hand is the mask form that we uh, included in the supply list from Dick Blick. I don't have one of those around and I don't have an old Halloween mask or Mardi Gras mask laying around, but if you didn't purchase those from Dick Blick, one of those, then anything like that will suffice. So an old Mardi Gras mask or an old Halloween mask, if you have one of those sitting around, the plastic kind that has the elastic strap that goes around the back. So let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna use. So we're gonna start by talking about the supplies that you've purchased, beginning with a set of brushes. Yours probably won't be blue handled, but they will be bristle brushes. They may be green with a variety of sizes and a variety of tips. These are great for the classroom. They're inexpensive and easy to clean. You also, we decided on acrylic paint. Blickrylic is a, an inexpensive brand, high quality, and you have an, an entire set of six mixing color paints. You can mix any variety of colors from this set. So you will have some left over and that's a good thing. A glue stick, which you may have already at home, but if not, it was in your kit. And a drawing pad. Yours might look a little bit different, but it's a large pad of paper. You're gonna be making your own glue, but if you wanna use school glue, and skip the mixing and cooking, then you can. You're gonna need a compass, the kind for drawing, not navigating. You'll need an X-Acto knife. And this is, bear in mind, this is for your use, for preparation. You won't be using X-Acto knives with your children in the class. You need some measuring tools, and here I have a ruler and a triangle. Most importantly, you just need a straight edge, and the triangle is for determining 90 degree angles. There are lots of things you can substitute for this, so if you don't have one, don't worry about it. I'll talk about substitutions for these things in the modules themselves. You need a regular house paint brush. This is something you probably have laying around at home. Anything, will, Any size will do. And then you need some texture making tools. So old credit cards, old gift cards, combs, uh, forks, kitchen tools, uh, paint scrapers, anything that will make a texture or a pattern in wet paint will do. And you're gonna need some yarn. A variety of colors is gonna make the most satisfying project. You need some old newspaper. If you have shredded paper in your sh paper shredder, that'll work too. But the newspaper is going to be for making paper clay. And then you need some compressed cardboard. We're going to use the back side of your drawing pad for this. So you don't need to purchase anything or find anything around the house because we already have it. It came with your set. It is condensed, unlike this, which is a cardboard box. So save the box your supplies came in if you can. But this cardboard is called corrugated cardboard, and we will be cutting that up and using it also. The difference between this and the compressed are the holes that you see. It's kind of spongy. So we'll be using both types, and they're easily sourced inexpensively. You'll need some scissors. And a palette. I'm using a butcher tray, a, a baking tin, or 
baking sheet is great. So that's it for the supplies. And uh, I hope that offered some clarification as to how we're gonna use each one of these materials for each uh, project that we're gonna do in class, as well as how you can use those in other, other ways in your classroom. So if you have questions, then please email me in the D2L platform. We check that regularly, um, probably a little bit more regularly than we are checking our university email. And it helps me keep a track of themes. If, if students are asking some of the same questions over and over, I can, I can answer that in an, an announcement post. So ask questions there and enjoy putting your studio space together. Thank you.